Hi guys, it's lovely to see you. Hello, thanks so much everyone who's joined. I can see there's people on Instagram and YouTube. Um, Helen, welcome. Uh, Magnus, hello to you too. Thanks so much. Um, so, oh hi Paul, lovely to see you. So folks, um, I am live on Instagram and um, YouTube and Twitch. Um, the interface on Instagram is restricted to this kind of dimension, whereas on YouTube it's wider. So y you might want to go to YouTube, but it's totally fine if you want to stay here. So um, the, uh, the link to YouTube is on my website. I'll, I'll show you that in a second, but, um, but this is fine. I'm so happy you're here. I hope you're having a nice weekend. Um, I am, and I've been really looking forward to this because I love a draw. So um, yeah, how are you guys? So you can put stuff in the chat, you can chat to each other, you can chat to me. Um, I can see your uh, your comments. I think I can see them on YouTube as well. I might have to um, check that. I'll do that in a minute. Um, right, so we're drawing one of my favorite um, ever. I just love this picture. I can turn the music down a little bit there. Okay, so if anything's um, not right with the um, volume or um, the camera, just let me know and I can tweak things. So we're gonna be drawing this beautiful hair, which was drawn in the 16th century by Albrecht Dürer. Um, so not to be confused with um, Albrecht Dürer's beautiful hair, um, which really was quite something. So Albrecht Dürer has had a few things uh, leveled at him, including extreme vanity. Um, but he was uh, he was an early proponent of the self-portrait, and um, and basically an incredible observational artist. And his work um, still stands up today. So um, I just thought it would be really nice to spend a couple of hours seeing what I could learn. And, um, and I hope that you're, you know, if you've got your pencils and paper out, then you can do some, you can sketch along. Um, obviously, it's totally optional. And if you want to just watch me, that's fine too. So um, I'll show you my drawing board. So here we are. I've got, um, I've actually got a skull up ready. Um, let me just move my picture over for a second so that people on Instagram can say hello. Okay, so I've got my drawing board going on here and I will move the camera away a little bit, just a little bit more like that. And then for people on Instagram, I'm just going to move this here for a second. You can see I've got a, um, a hair skull image, which I just took from Wikipedia. And um, I need to mention there's a credit for the people who own the image, which is on my website and I'll put it in the comments um, when I save this video. So I thought that as we are doing um, Dura's hair, um, it would be good to start by doing a quick skull sketch because that is um, a really good way to understand the shape of the head. So I often, um, if I'm doing a person or a, um, a creature, I often try and at least think about the um, anatomy of the skull and um, particularly, uh, excuse my bags, but bags are quite a good indicator. They usually fall along the edge of the eye socket. Um, so try and think about the eye sockets, try and think about the bridge of the nose. Um, obviously the nose itself actually is not really much to do with the skull, but um, you look for cheekbones, like that. So those are all um, very characteristic of a species, whereas they do, of course, vary a lot within a species. Um, I thought it would be good to start with a kind of generic um, skull, just for a few minutes as a sort of a warm up. So um, if you wanted to get your um, some white paper and a pencil, then um, obviously that would be really good. And um, you can do your drawing as well. And um, clearly, a cup of tea, vital piece of equipment. Um, and I'm not shy about using a rubber, so I use a putty rubber. Um, but you know, you can, like, I'm just going to turn a better light on for a second. Excuse me. Light doesn't last forever, but uh, there we go. Okay. So um, yeah. So if you want to ask me any questions at any point, I'll do my best to answer. 
Um, I'm not a teacher, um, but uh, I, you know, I'm always happy to share whatever I know. So um, yeah, help yourself to uh, pick my brains. Right, I might just move my face out of the way for you Instagram people, but I'm still very much here and watching the chat. Okay. So, um, lovely. Right, let's have a look at this skull. Okay. So I'm really just, um, so if you look on my website, I've also provided these photos so um, you can um, download them if you want and um, use them later. So this, uh, so if you prefer drawing from a bigger reference, then um, there's one available. So I'm just going to have a quick look at basically at the um, anatomy of the um, the skull of the hair. This one isn't quite at the same angle as the um, reference that we're drawing from, um, but it's uh, it's good enough to get a sense of where the key things are. And then when I look at the drawing itself, the uh, Jura drawing, I'm going to be um, painting and drawing from. Uh, we, we know what landmarks to look for. So it's always good when you're drawing something, I find, um, to look for the landmarks because if you know where the kind of skull features are underneath the skin, then you can you can look at what your, um, there's, so there's the hinge. So there's, so just like um, the human skull, there's the, there's the jaw at the bottom and um, I'm looking at the, so that you can see the eye, eyebrow kind of line there. And then, I mean, obviously a hare's nose, it, it, actually the bone goes quite far by the looks of it to the end of the nose, whereas our nose bone stops um, quite a way short of the end of our nose. Um, So I'm not going to spend long doing this because I want to spend most of the two hours doing the uh, fun bit. But um, and as I said, please do uh, don't hesitate to ask questions. Um, makes it more interesting. I'm looking, I'm just looking there. I'm taking a sort of plumb line down from that just from a um, measuring point of view and looking at this wonderful negative shape here there that that's all inside the hare's mouth i didn't realize till i looked at this skull that they have this kind of collection of teeth at the back and then they've got those front teeth and i didn't realize they have this big gap here um that's an interesting little thing okay so um this kind of beautiful network of it's almost like lace is is of no consequence for what I'm going to be doing but interesting to see. So the things I'm really looking for is they, they, they've got these kind of protrusions here almost like eyebrows <laughs> that come up above the um, above the eye just there um, so we can kind of look I will look when we're on the a reference photo. I'll try and have a look for those. So I'm going to keep this drawing to hand and there's a ridge, there's clearly a ridge that comes down here which may or may not be visible. So I'm just when I look at the photo of the hair, sorry, of the hair drawing in a little while, I'm going to be looking for these landmarks. Um, guys, can you see all right? I'm, uh, I hope this is uh, I hope this is useful, but uh, just, you know, feel free to shout if the music's too loud or you want more music and less talking, that's also fine. Um, right, and they've got this big panel here. So that's concave just there. And then there's, this is like the... Uh, this is kind of like their cheekbone here. 
just like round round the um, eye socket to look out for and there's an edge there so I'm just kind of like picking out where the edges are this is nearly nearly done it's not going to be a masterpiece um, and trying to imagine now there's a there's a real hole there so I'm not sure but that might be where the eye sits yeah it's very very circular on that edge there and then this lot here is behind so there's quite a protrusion here which may we may well be able to see when we look at the hair and um, I'm just going to shade here so that it's a marker to me so I can kind of see which protrusions to look for when I look at the uh, drawing and as I said like which which kind of landmarks um, and then we've got so there's a ridge down down the middle there's a joint in the middle of the nose there and um, there's a recess just there I'll move that to the middle so you can see on Instagram okay um, if anyone has joined and is watching on Instagram just to let you know uh, this is also live on my YouTube channel and you might find um, you get a better experience watching on YouTube and the only thing is I'm gonna have to take a, a moment now what have I got in there? and I've got another okay so those are the teeth on the other side um, so I am going to take a pause for a second just to make sure I can see the chat on YouTube right so here is the hair's jaw I'm not going to do a whole uh, skeleton that would probably be um, a, a good idea to check but I'm just going to see if we can wing it with things like um, a rib cage um, I think we know hairs have got a rib cage and joints um, so I will just try and uh, look at those as I see them right so and then we have uh, <clears throat> quite it so this this bit here comes quite far forward where the teeth are um, where are the teeth and um, the bottom teeth and so those front teeth seem to sit in front of the uh, jaw below okay um, and let's just check we've got that so we've got this line down here there we are right I'll just use the putty rubber to tidy up a few structural things get them out of the way because they're not needed now and that means now I've just got the things that I need to look for kind of marked here um, so I'm going to celebrate with a swig of tea and I'm going to have a quick look on YouTube just to see if there are um, any comments that I need to respond to excuse me one second Hi Mary, oh lovely to see you, thank you. Um, oh yes, and um, yes Paul, and hi yesterday, thank you so much for joining, that's really great. Okay, so um, I'm going to pop backwards and forwards to uh, YouTube so that I can see your comment. Um, thank you very much for joining. So we've got the skull picture there ready, and um, now I'm going to move on to the, the hair itself keeping that skull just to hand so um, I will put my drawing board here now for people on um, YouTube you will have a little reference of the skull visible in the corner um, and for people watching on um, Instagram cheers I say my hello Um, right 
I hope that's right. Let me just see. Okay. Right. Cheers. So I'm going to start um, by bringing up the reference photo on my uh, tablet and um, you can see this um, reference photo. Let's show you the there we are. So that's um, the subject that we're going to be drawing. So if you want to um, download that for yourself, the address at the bottom of the screen is just on gailweedartist.com slash live. And there you can see the, um, I'll put a link on on Instagram as well. Uh, so you can see the um, reference photo and also the skull reference photo. And you can use those later if you want. So if you want to just watch me now, um, and we can um, uh, go through the process and then you could download the photos and have a go yourself later. Okay, but if you want to draw with me, then that would be really, really nice. So I'm going to start, um, I'll move you over to the drawing board. Okay, so what I'm using is, uh, this is really lovely. It's my favourite um, mixed media. I use this for portraits as well. I use this for... Um, Great things. It's um, Strathmore toned tan paper. It's um, very uh, thick and very um, good with um, all sorts of mixed media. And if you get it a little bit wet, that's also okay. So um, I will start by um, just kind of mapping out. Um, the proportions. I'm just going to do it by eye. You could, you might decide you wanted to do this um, uh, more precisely. Um, if you want to do it to scale, which I am, it's um, I think it's about 25 by 23 centimeters. So I've mapped out a, a little square in graphite, and um, I'm going to use. Um, Watercolour pencils, pet, paint brushes. I've got a bit of water uh, here. Oops, there we are. Um, so I will start with a very gentle pencil sketch, um, which I'll probably rub out afterwards. So if you wanted to draw along, then get your um, reference photo up. And let's just start by doing what we call the envelope. Mary, thank you so much for your comment. That was really nice. I'm so happy that you do find this uh, interesting. It's really lovely of you to join. And guys, please don't feel you know, you're expected to join for very long as well if you want to. Um, just being very light, touch, mapping out the big shapes. I'm looking at, you know, how big is that? Uh, head relative so we'll try and get the um, so I'm going to say that is the back of the back leg and I want to have this edge roughly so here is the top of the head like that I might need to bring this down a little bit okay I'm going to bring that leg down because we've got these beautiful high ears so we've got, um, if I draw from that, so that is the um, bottom of its back leg, kind of um, heel, if you like. And then there's a line going down to here. We've got those two very neat paws. I always think rabbits look so neat. Now I'm looking, there's the edge of the rabbit's muzzle just kind of doing a uh, horizontal in my head kind of horizontal lines to try and anchor the key outline there and then um, so now I'm going to look at so the rabbit's got this lovely chest here and I'm also kind of looking while I'm drawing I'm looking at the um, at the beautiful tones so you can see lovely um, warm browns and then at the back that lovely cool almost bluey grey so when I do the um, uh, early washes of watercolour they're going to be really important um, 
features to sorry uh you know just large bits of tone thanks for joining it's really lovely to see you if you uh if you've just joined on instagram you're really welcome to um watch on instagram but it's also i'm on youtube and twitch so you get the full width so you can see the reference photo but i've put the reference photo on my website as well so if you fancy drawing along if i can see you're an artist um you're you're very welcome to um draw with me um ask questions in the chat um or just lurk lurking is also very fine right so i'm just doing the main landmarks thinking oh here's that skull so looking at that brow that brow ridge i don't know whether there's been i, I was reading some speculation about how dura um not such a well-observed take on a picture like this and um there were theories that because I, I don't know if you can see um, the actual eye um, reflection is uh, is an is a highlight of a window and uh, that might just have been a device he used but there was a suggestion that he might have caught a hair and kept it in his studio or um, he might have um, you know used a bit of taxidermy for reference but uh, whatever it was uh, or, or or finished it with a dead dead hair that's also possible so it might have ended up cooking pot but um yeah right so i'm doing a lot of squinting if you, it's not a, it's not a pretty sight me squinting so it's probably an advantage to people who are watching on instagram because you won't be able to see and then i'm looking at the so this is the uh elbow here of the um front leg um, there and there's the curve of the back now because um, because you're watching I might just break my own rule I'm not sure I might need to go up over the boundary of the, the planned boundary I would normally try and just stick to the envelope but I think I might have uh, set the hair slightly too high so I will just um, tweak that. Now I'm having a quick look of course at the skull, um, trying to imagine where these um, eye sockets are. So I can see the brow there and um, I can see the eyeballs which I think are probably here. So we've got this kind of nose going down like that. Okay, I think the eyeball is there. Um, and the other eyeball across the other side we can just see there. So my skull the skull drawing is um, at a slightly different angle but I'm going to look for these cheekbones as well so you can so they would be I'm thinking here there'll be a, a dip and um, they've got this hairs have got this kind of skull here like that so let's move that out of the way um, now get those lovely ears in so, I'm just sorting this haunch out in order to look at the negative space for the ear there so we've got one that comes like this I wonder if you've got your pencils out Paul And then from there, that it's actually up to here. So I've gone over. <clears throat> Very shoddy. For the sake of entertainment, I'm just going to go with it. Now let's. I'll just check the distances. So the um, 
So the distance from where the ear meets the skull here, we've got a joint there, down to here is about the same as the distance to the top of the ear. So actually I did, it wasn't too far off there. Get that like that. And um, take this here. So looking at this negative shape between the ears, right, something's going wrong with these ears. So I'm going to go back to here and have a look at where they, where they join in. You're probably looking at this and can probably see exactly where I've gone wrong. Right, where? Well, so at this point, it's obviously uh, much easier to sort things out than if you go later. <clears throat> Perhaps the head. Yeah, let's get that up there. Cheek here. Right, let's look at the volumes. So there's the volume of the muzzle. There's the volume of the cheek. Here is the brow, like that. And the head. Right, so I'm just going to look then using a rough... So that's the length of the head. Yeah, that's probably got a mark here. So I'm going to um, erase a lot of these lines um, before I put the watercolour on, um, although the water won't really pick it up. Um, it's not great to have graphite hanging around under your watercolour. There, okay, so we've got this ear looking a bit better. Right, putty rubber to the rescue. It's a slow process and um, as you can see, important not to despair if you're going off piste, starting to look a bit more rabbity or hairy. There, right. So, um, let's see. Okay, we have a beautiful twisty fold in this rabbit's ear as well. I'm guessing it's listening over there, what's going on. Listening to another conversation. Right, so quick. Putting in some, a few more edges. There's the other haunch there. There's a, like a a joint here so that haunch comes in. Um, even though this is going to be covered in fur I think it's really good to get those um, those key features in. Right now let's have a look at getting these front paws in position. Missing my resident biologist who's a particularly uh, expert on rabbits. She sometimes helps me with terminology. Right, and I'm going to treat these like, um, human hands, trying to consider them as planes. So it's really good when you're drawing hands not to think about the, 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 the sausagey fingers but think about the uh, rhythm of the knuckles, the rhythm of the ends. Right. So I'm looking, that's where they join. There's the knuckles and down here is the toes. So I'll put those in later. Okay, 
and I'm looking as well at just landmarks before we get the colour in. Okay, right, let's have a quick chat, a cup of tea, hello. Happy Saturday everybody, it's really nice of you to join. Um, I'm just going to have a quick look on, hi Paul, oh Farida, lovely to see you, thank you so much for joining, having a small art lesson, and Jibril, hi Jibril, thank you so much for joining. Um, oh great, yep, and Paul, you tried some sites drawing along, you, you're, oh don't worry, don't worry if you're feeling um, that you're, um, you're drawing slow Paul that's absolutely fine you know what uh, sometimes it's really good to slow down there is absolutely no rush sometimes people you know it's sometimes you feel like drawing quick sketches and other times you're um, this is the business so um, you know whatever whatever works for you the main thing is that you enjoy it and some artists churn stuff out I'm slightly in that category but um, some artists uh, are much more meticulous and slow it's good to try both it's always good to mix it up right so now i'm going to um, try and keep the important bits and rub out the rest and then we're going to get the watercolors out and put some color on. so i will be using um, just a, a, a mixture of colors and after that i will be using some inks so I've got a few um, random watercolours that I grabbed in a hurry. So uh, there's a De La Rowney. This is the Sienna. So I use a dark, I'm going to be using a dark brown, um, a yellow. This happens to be Naples yellow. Um, uh, I wanted to find a dark blue, but I couldn't lay my hands on one. So I'm actually, oh no, this is Indian. So there's, that's a very dark blue. Oh no, that's Payne's grey. I couldn't get the indigo open. <laughs> uh, so I might be using that uh, to grey things down. And I've got uh, Chinese white, um, or I might use some gouache um, for the white over the top. But first of all, I'm going to mix up some sort of body colour, you know, not um, uh, the, co the colours for the general washes for the body and put them on and then um, looking at the reference photo and we'll have another look at the reference photo close up in a second um, it seems to be that um, a lot of the colour is built up with um, layers of texture I'll show you the reference photo there I can actually zoom in a little bit let's see can I zoom in for you there just see that a bit more um, but if you go and look on my website you will see the um, the photo that you can download so you can take a copy of it and um, then it'll be much easier for you to zoom in when you're when you're wanting to copy for yourself okay so I'm um, trying to look for uh, biggish shapes and um, onto my drawing board there I'm thinking that maybe this line might be and it looks all right but this ear set a little bit too far and this eye is a little bit too far forward that's better maybe that's what was throwing me off okay softly softly creep up on something that looks rather like I'm not going to worry too much about um, there we go right so um, now let's get let's get some paints out so I'm just going to take um, I'm going to try and mix a little a kind of ready brown and a um, cooler brown so the ready brown is what we would call a warm brown and I'm going to well this is very crumbly excuse me okay I'm going to use this I haven't uh, even tried this um, so different sorts of yellows do behave very differently this is a very creamy yellow interesting to see how that 
caves and um, what sort of red oh I've got a cadmium red so I know I'm going to be very strong I won't need much of that Let's see how that mixes with the yellow okay so what I'm trying to do is just find some colors to do as very light washes so um, in terms of brushes it's always um, a good idea to try and use the biggest brush that you can bear so I'm going to I've got this one here this is uh, synthetic ones are great but this one happens to be a sable and I really like this one it's nice and, nice and uh, it really holds a lot of paint so let's, um, right if you can see that now I'm just going to see I'm a bit worried about this yellow that I've chosen whether it's going to work I think it'll be all right and I've got quite a lot of spare paper around the edges so um, yeah that's quite nice actually uh, so if it was oil I'd be busy trying to pre-mix my colors um, now I, and I do have to allow slightly for the color of the paper as well so I'm just going to test on the side here and see let's see how that yeah that's quite a it's quite bright but given that it's going to be covered with um, we're going to be putting lots of ink over the top um, to basically build up the texture with the hair of the hair I see what I did there um, it, I don't think it matters to be quite bright um, and quite strong because um, we'll lose some of that uh, density um, so I'm looking now at the reference photo. I'll take you to that for a second. Uh, and I'm just looking for areas where it's, um, you can see them. There's some yellowy areas and some red areas. So I'm just going to try and pick out, at the moment I've got quite a sort of warmish yellowy color. So I'll put a little bit more red in at uh, a little, in a point. So I'm also trying, it's a really good way to um, try and focus on the big shapes too. So this is actually even more yellow at the back here on that there. And because I'm using heavyweight mixed media paper, it's um, great and it won't, it shouldn't uh, bobble up. If you use kind of thinner paper, it can go a bit rumply, but um, on my website, I have put a link but you can find them on YouTube easily to a um, demo on how to stretch paper. So if you want to, uh, if you don't want to invest in really um, expensive watercolor paper, you can stretch cheaper paper and get the same kind of results. Right. So we've got a lovely pinky beigey area here. And I'm going to try and use some of the ground colour of the paper as well. So I will be using, leaving some of this um, bare, where the colour matches the sort of beigey bits. Now I'm going to try. I'm trying to mix a slightly more ready brown. So I'm using less of the yellow, and I'm pulling in a bit of that brown. Okay, and that's for this muzzle here. I wonder how long Dura took to do this. I suspect it was um, quite a lot longer than the two hours that we're going to be taking. And um, right, and I can see I might go for some up here as well. Some of that. There. And when this is dry, I am going to try and rub out some of the graphite. Quite often you can rub it out through the watercolour. So there's a lovely warm, probably quite yellowy actually, I'll go for a slightly more yellow colour there on that edge. This is a lovely flash of yellow. So I'm using, just for in case you wanted to know, I'm using a Naples yellow, which is a really creamy yellow. It's really lovely. Um, and that's luck rather than judgment that that happens to match the tone of the hair. Okay. 
Um, right, and those pores, I'll show you the reference photo. Let's just have a look at the um, reference. So you can see there are warm brown, the pores, and then that back haunch is a very cool uh, brown or even a light, you could, you could call that a light grey. So um, let's put the colours in now. So I'm going to go for a sort of, so I'm just using three colours. In general, it is quite good to try and limit, I find, to limit your palette because um, the advantage of limiting a palette is that you get a um, kind of harmonious picture without, without too much uh, deliberation. Now I'm looking, looking at the reference photo, I think there's a very light creamy undercoat and then there is a, a lot of dark hair textured over the top. Right, there's that and then this here as well, it's got the lovely, that's actually we might go in there with a little bit of white later, I've got some white ink as well ready to play with. Um, okay now I've got some of the warm, the warm browns kind of reserved now, so I might go for um, some of those cooler ones, let's just go up here we've got really done that panel there so there's the there's the nose so remember we've got this groove here and then a, a, the um, there that's the top bit of the, the bridge of the nose um, right and I've missed a little a lovely kind of orangey red area on that cheek get that in they really sing those those bits, I think. Here, so beautiful. There, and it kind of tucks in behind the muzzle, and actually comes around here a bit as well. So these colours will come out. We can just, uh, you know, take a take a decision to show them. And in fact, I'm seeing a little bit of pink in that core. I mean, I'm going to go over it with a warmer, darker brown. Right. So for those pores out a warmer gingery brown yeah. there and that is here tucked in there oh that's not brown enough okay. and I'm going to use the same one probably should really make a separate observation for that but just going to set them out and here so it's really it's quite I find it quite good to go round a picture once you've got a color on your brush to kind of scout round the picture and see where you can use that color but um, there is an argument against it I think that you can end up just making far too many general assumptions um, okay, right, and I'm seeing a lot of this colour under here, just marking the edge of the nose. There, right, and the nose is a cooler. Right, I think we're going to have to get this uh, Payne's Grey. I'm sorry, I did say in the prep that I would be using blue, but I haven't laid my hand on a blue, and actually Payne's Grey is really... A very dark blue could be considered that. So let's take a little bit more water, take a bit of tea. Cheers. And folks on YouTube, I'm going to have a look in a second. So if you've got any questions, do put them in. Um, don't feel obviously obliged in any way, but um, I will go and have a look in a second. Catch your comments. Right. So there, I can see that's too warm, much too warm. So I'm going to go cooler, more of that Payne's Grey, less of that brown. I don't know if you can see on here how blue it is. 
that's better and it sits under here so that there, there will be um, hairs over the top there but it, I'm going to get that base colour in and just looking for any more of that very cool grey it's really just pretty much just here um, Dura seems to have done quite a, a very good local job with that grey um, and, um, and again we've got some hairs over are going to be coming over that but I'll put this in so we've got it reserved underneath right I can't see oh there's a little cool area just here it's light but cool but I'll get that in as a, a base um, I can't see any actual grey on those ears um, and I think I will do the dark of the ears in ink um, and what else have we got here this is all this is a brown I think and here as well I'm going to go for a little bit more brown so we've nearly finished now with the watercolour and I'm going to um, then start I'm going to rub out the pencil and um, get the inks out and that's when it really becomes fun because we are then looking into the territory of um, the texture and how Dura kind of built the whole beautiful texture up in layers right. and there's a flat bit there here I think that is underneath slightly browny colour there and here we've got this panel here that's going down the middle of the nose and the nose itself Okay, we'll see how we get on with that. Um, so this actually, the under the hair in the, um, I'll move on to the reference photo again so you can see. Um, the Behind the eye, you can see there's quite a lot of cream there. So I'm going to just pick up, I've missed out those yellow flashes behind the eye. Um, but apart from that, I think I will um, leave it just the body colour of the, um, of the paper. So let's just clean the brush, go for some, I'm just going to use pretty much pure Naples yellow. I don't want it soaking wet because the um, uh, paper probably couldn't take that and it might start rumpling but I'm just going to go for that fairly concentrated yellow and there's a little bit there as well, a flash of yellow looking for any flashes of yellow that I can put in. This is quite an opaque paint, the Naples yellow, which is handy for this situation. Okay, right, I think that'll do. So um, while I, I'm just gonna give this a minute or two to dry. So I'm gonna put my paintbrush away. Um, and then I'll be using the putty rubber. But while I wait for that to dry, I'm going to get the ink pens out. So I'm using, looking closely at the picture, excuse me, um, I'm looking for um, what sort of ink Dura has used um, and how he's done it. And he seems to have used um, possibly brush, I think, to do some of the broader colours so if you've got the reference photo to hand have a look um, but I'm going to go onto YouTube and just have a quick look at the chat and make sure I haven't missed any comments from anyone there I think oh hello hi, Helen lovely to see you thanks so much for joining um, yeah okay right thank you and thanks Paul I'm glad you're, you're finding it interesting learning about watercolour that's really great so um, yeah there's lots of different styles of doing it but looking um, closely at the painting what I can see is that Dura seems to have used a brush um, as well as an ink pen so I'm going to go with a brush first and then um, the ink pen and um, what I'll do then is I will re 
constitute some of this watercolour but with a much finer brush so I think I'm going to try with this is called a rigger um, so I usually use this for oil painting for signing paintings but um, it's very it, you can see it's very very thin and um, when it's when it's wet you can see you can put it you can make it flat um, so not very good for mixing colors obviously you probably wouldn't want to mix with it but uh, very good for these um, this situation so I'm going to just mix up a kind of watery browny gray like if you zoom in on the picture that Dura has used you'll see that in a lot of the body the warm browny grey that's being used to add the texture so not the fine texture particularly those um, uh, light hairs are definitely done with a pen I would say some of the stronger colours are like that okay let me just see if this is yeah I might just give it one more minute so I will just do a little demo at the top um, oh, I know I've got a patch so I can do a test so when I did a test um, I can now just test over that I'll zoom in see there we are and just focus the camera there so I'm going to be doing something like this so that's very fine um, but if I load the paint up a little bit, brush up with a little bit more watery paint, I think Dura did some quite thicker like this, looking at it. So I'm going to be doing some like that to start with, and then um, some thinner. See, with this rigger brush, it's great. Um, the only thing is really that it's very tempting to get completely... Um, straight hair there um, always one <laughs> uh, so it's all it's very tempting to get completely sucked into the detail and I'm really going to try not to do that and to keep my distance from that so this area here looks very dark but I think that's going to be okay because it's going to have um, this area next to it is going to get a lot darker so oh thank you Magnus um, oh yeah, lovely to see you. Thanks so much for joining. Really lovely. Um, and hi Chuck. I don't know if you're still here, but um, really lovely of you to check in. So I'm just doing um, Dura's hair and um, as an exercise, seeing what we can learn. Um, there we are. Let's get that camera in and focus okay so I think I'm at the stage where I can get the putty rubber here's the so for anyone who's recently joined we started off just looking at the skull shape of the hair um, and I've seemed to have hidden my own putty rubber from myself right here we are yeah these are brilliant probably a bit bigger than needed okay and um, so I'm just going to lose the graphite, um, doesn't do too much harm with this sort of drawing anyway, but um, you can kind of rub it out sort of through the, through the watercolour, just cleans it up a bit and gives us a fresh, almost blank canvas. Yeah, so I'm going to actually be rendering form with the texture. Quite an unusual way to do it. You normally would try and stay off uh, texture, but that's something I think that makes this Dura's painting and uh, drawing so successful, is that balance between texture and... You know, he really went to town on texture. Um, so it's quite fun to do that for a change. Yeah. 
So if you're doing this at home, um, you know, you could do this on white paper, you could do this with pencils, there's not um, acrylics, um, there's no need particularly to stick to these materials. Um, the main thing is just trying out the principle of getting the um, big masses massed in in um, the kind of undercoat colour. So if you imagine the hair's fur, I've been trying to look for the sort of colour that's not on the top, um, more the colours that are on the underneath. Okay, so let's have a go then with this rigger brush. This is uh, my rigger, and um, I'm just zooming in, and I'm going to just try. So Dura really, uh, it, it was a fantastic, um, tactful way of doing it that really uses or used um, a clear background which I think is really nice so um, let me just move this over a little bit so I'm going to start in a less conspicuous area and um, just kind of get a feel for what's going on here so I think um, looking at that we really need to a focus the camera and bring it down a bit there we are. right Is that in focus? Yeah. Okay. That's all right. No. Sorry, just one second, but it will massively improve your viewing, I think, if I get my camera focused on drawing board. Right. So, um, looking, if you've got the reference photo, you will see, I think this is too light. So, I'm going to just make, put a bit less water in my paint. Um, and mix up a um, slightly stronger colour. So I've got Payne's, Gr Payne's Grey and Burnt Umber, which is a, it seems to be giving me a nice cool brown. I'm just looking at these. So there's, this, there's a, a light edge on the, the, um, there, on the edge of the ear. And then I'm just doing some texture on that haunch there, trying to match um, both the uh, darkness, so the tonal values, and the coolness of the marks that Dura made. And I'm really just testing this out before I go large on the more conspicuous areas. So that looks um, reasonably close in terms of the finished colour effect. And you can see this um, ear here. So this is a really lovely thing that you do a lot with watercolour, less so with other mediums, which is that I'm going to define this ear and the hairs on the ear by cutting into it with the, neg with the darker with these dark hairs here can you see that's a real uh, watercolor watercolor thing um, you quite often go in with the darks to make the lights happen okay hi yesterday you're here on um, you're over on Instagram now Lovely. I know you dot around thank you so much for checking in okay so um, it really is a bit like a jigsaw puzzle now and just really going going around squinting a lot looking for texture making sure I've got my did with enough and um, you can if you look at the reference photo which is on my website you'll see or on Wikipedia you just go to Wikipedia or do it. it's in the public domain so free to download um, and there are lots of really good high resolution pictures of this available. Now I've got some lovely folds going on here so I'm just going to give myself a bit of a track to follow because I don't want to get too lost in um, just the lines of the fur. I want to make sure I've got the um, the direction right and then get a bit more 
paint on my brush up a little bit darker because they're quite dark and um, so yeah there's another nice thing about this is the way that the um, the texture is built up in light over the top so um, according to what I've read Jura used body colour which is uh, we know as gouache I get told off by my children for how I pronounce that, so I'm not quite sure what the, the real way is. Okay. And you just adjust the darkness by the um, amount of pigment, water to pigment. Um, there. And I'm doing quite a lot of squinting. So just like other drawings and watercolour tends to dry lighter than it goes on so don't um, don't worry if it looks a bit strong you get a you get a reprieve but it is uh, worth being a bit careful because obviously you can't delete it <laughs> there's no delete key Right, let's just zoom out a little bit so you can see the. So this is going to have a uh, light ink as well over the top. So I think I need to actually go quite a bit darker with some of these colours. Just mixing up a slightly more intense black. This is such a lovely way to spend a Sunday from my point of view. I really when I thought of doing this, I thought I could very happily do this anyway, live stream or no live stream. But uh, I really hope, Farida, if you're still watching with your brother, I really hope that you, um, you're you enjoying it as well. And um, you can always just choose a bit of the picture. You don't need to do the whole. You could just do the hair's head if it seemed um, a bit full on. Right. Trying to really sense the direction of these bits of fluff. Quite large areas. Getting. Right, and then over here we've got this darker section. And um, squinting at the reference photo, you can see there's quite a. Um, it's almost an outline. It looks as though Dura kind of maybe went round initially with a kind of browny, darker, maybe sketched the edge, um, but maybe it's just his way of showing the, um, you know, as the, as the form turns, it goes round. So maybe it's that. Um, I feel like I've got a little bit too much contrast in this section. But um, I think that might go once it's filled up with more noise, more visual noise. Lay some dark in here because that's going to have light hairs going over the top. Okay. And um, Dura did some really beautiful stray hairs. Um, some of them have got quite a rhythm to them, um, just as real hairs. And then there's the odd straggler. I'll go in a bit closer for that. You can see. Actually, if I can focus the camera with my paintbrush, we see my hoof. Right, so here's my, I'm just using a plate and just keeping a sort of pool of um, Payne's Grey and burnt, um, burnt umber that I'm using to mix. I'm going to make a little puddle there. Might get the, um, squeeze a bit more Payne's Grey in. So the Payne's Grey is really like a dark blue 
kind of indigo colour. Um, some some watercolourists uh, would wouldn't touch it with a barge pole, um, and others swear by it for sky, you know, moody skies and things like that. Right, so hopefully you can see I'm making a very cool, dark, intense brown. Um, I'm just having that on the side. And if I put that there, you can see it as I work. Okay. Um, so again, just like I did up here with the ear, I can start to define some of these hairs in here, in this lighter area, by cutting into them. So I'm defining them kind of negatively, you could say. I've got a lovely kind of pinky hue. And then just do the so Jura did leave so this area here he's not really he's not just gone uniformly over everything with uh, um, his hairs his hair texture he has been a little bit selective um, or very selective I'm sure it wasn't nothing's accidental um, so this area here is actually quite light and quite um, open as in not really terribly detailed. Now squinting I'm looking and thinking I need to darken this area a little bit. That's jumping out a bit too much. And a few more hairs in here. There's a sort of a line just here I think. There we go. Um, if you want to ask any questions, make any observations, um, please don't hesitate. I'm watching the comment on, watching the chat on uh, Twitch and um, YouTube as well as Instagram. So feel free to make any observations. So this area here is just completely um, the body colour of the, the ground colour of the paper, which just happened to match uh, Jura's under painting. Mine looks very, very crude to his but hey ho so let's get some creases in here and he's really observed the kind of grouping in tufts that seems to be happening along the hair's back with some quite thick areas of dark And again, we've got this kind of silhouetting on the top edge there that really makes me think he might have gone round the edge early on with a darker outline. Okay. So I'm allowing for uh, future layers of um, light. So I'm going to go in with a, I probably use some, um, I've got this Bombay ink white. So I might try using that and an ink pen just for a bit of fun. Um, and also look how, if you're looking at the reference photo, which is available, you know, widely available on um, Wikipedia, but also on my, um, on my website if you want to look it. Uh, you can see that Dura has really varied the amount of detail as well. So some areas like here don't have lots of conspicuous um, individual hairs. They're more, they're wider. In fact, I wonder if I might use a slightly, I'm going to try it, see what happens. Yeah. So here he's actually seems to have used, and I'm, I'm assuming that these will dry lighter. It's not as contrasting on the reference bit. 
but I think these ones here, um, I think in a way by not having that contrast he's drawing the eye away to other areas. So this area here will just recede as you're viewing. Um, and then other areas where there's more detail are more obvious. Let me get that fold in there. Might even grade these washes slightly. Let me also speed it up a bit. bit more mothballed. And then this here, this is quite a cool, I might actually go in with a little bit of a uh, diamond way there. That very cool area there. I think that dries a little lighter. Okay. Um, some shaping there. Right. So that at the moment this looks very disjointed and I'm hoping that these contrasts yeah. less to the chat for a second. Hello there, hi, thanks so much everyone who's watching. I'm not going to stay chatting like this for long, I'll get back to the drawing board, but just to say uh, if you've just joined, um, I'm drawing Jura's hair, just trying to do a master copy looking quite close. Um, I've done um, a sort of high level sketch, like a biggish sketch in graphite and then um, just coloured in some body colour and I'm now going in looking at the texture and the way he did his text. So at the moment my contrast is quite a lot um, stronger than Jura's contrast but I'm hoping that, in fact the camera makes it look more pronounced, um, but I'm hoping that once I get some lights in and just smooth it with more texture that will even out and it will just feel kind of rich like the picture. Okay, so I think it would be fun to go on and do a bit of face. So let's have a look. Um, right, now, how am I going to do this? So we've got, uh, so the highlights of the eyes are going in near the end, but I do need to get some landmarks in. So, that there. So I'm looking at the hair on the reference photo and I'm going to put a landmark marks in here. So I'm really using the rigger now to draw, um, just working out where that muzzle splits um, into the two sides. So we've got that's there. And um, this is preparing for doing the eyes. So I'm looking at the angle of the eyes across here, keeping an eye on where the brow is. So trying to think about the skeleton there. And looking at the fact that this nose is slightly, almost vertical actually, looking for a plum, imagining a plumb line. So this would be this would probably make more sense if you've got the uh, reference photo to view. So if you look on my website, um, you'll see the, uh, or if you look on YouTube, you can see the address for the reference photos. But just Google um, Dura's hair, um, and you will get lots of photos. And just try and find one that is of the original, not of one of the many copies, because it's not just me who wants to copy this. Um, it's a very popular one to copy with good reason. Okay, so I'm really just drawing with a paintbrush for a second, getting the boundaries of the eyes established. Make sure they look okay. I might just get, and then, so this is that, uh, you, if you follow me and watched any of my videos before, you'll know that I do quite often remark that uh, getting the eyes in early is quite a good quite a good gimmick because people uh, people respond to eyes don't they so if you've got them in then suddenly the thing starts to look 
convincing and um, there we go, right. One eye, this other one, it's also really dark. There we go, and there. So this is really quite a different way of drawing, you know, whereas I would normally go from you know general to specific. I'm actually really the, the general was a very quick stage, and we we were growing very specific into great detail. But looking at the picture, Dura does seem to have built it up by building up detail, not um, you know. Whilst he he obviously did some general stuff, wasn't uh, right. Now I'm looking from the eye, doing some squinting going up to try and find where the joint is with the ear um, and I think we've got quite a bit here it's not terribly far and I think it's like there I'm just going to put a little marker in there where it's dark behind the ear um, oh <laughs> that's so nice thank you is that you Matthew that's so lovely. Hi. Yeah, it's free therapy. Yeah. <laughs> Fill your boots. How are you doing? It's so nice to see you're on here. I can't believe you've checked me out. <laughs> right. Um, okay. So let's go for... Oh, we need some more warm brown. So Matthew, this is my palette at Soup Bowl. Um, and I'm just mixing burnt, burnt sienna, and um, kind of drawing with this brush. This is a rigger brush. I'm going to go for the thicker brush again in a minute. Um, but just kind of marking out. So Dura looks as though he made a lot of the colour by, um, by by doing texture. So a, a lot of his. Um, detail also is being used to render form um, which is quite an unusual technique and um, I'm not pretending for a minute that it's going to I'm going to boss it a la Jura but um, hopefully it in some way resembles what he did right and then there's a there's a cheeky cheek that's coming out here Hopefully you can see that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I don't know that I am better than anyone, but I'm glad you're enjoying it. That's the main thing. If you like it, that's fine. That my job is done. I'm not here. To, I'm here to try and inspire you to try, not to uh, not to make you just admire me. Thank you. Right. I might put a little bit of yellow in this space here some point and um, lovely silhouette is there. It's really kind of bristly you can just see the texture as they hit the background and then a kind of nice big bulging eyebrow let's get some of these ones in as well right some flamboyant eyebrow hair that would uh, delight any politician. Um, it feels quite decadent putting in these details so early. But um, you can see um, Dura has really made a distinction between sort of brittle hairs that are kind of whiskery and the um, textural hairs. Right, let's get those. I'm gonna, I was kind of rehearsing. Sometimes you can rehearse your. And he's done one that's really like a stray. Okay. Uh, and I'm allowing for the fact, I'm doing these quite dark, but knowing that they will um, dry lighter. We've got another frizzy one here. 
um, it's really nice looking at Dura himself. He he was quite fond of his own hair, I think. Have a look at this one. Um, yeah, look at that, Dura's hair. He was clearly, I would say, a hair guy. Right, um, I wonder what he'd make of my blue hair. Right, that's enough of that. Get on with this. So, got quite a lot here on the nose. Oh, thank you. It's really lovely of you to see. Please don't, uh, you know, I'm not sure it's going to warrant a long watch. It's going to be, this is going to be a long video, Matthew. So just really lovely of you to check in. Thank you. It is literally watching paint dry. Okay, so um, don't hesitate to ask if there's anything I can um, answer. I'm delighted to help, but um, may not be. But I will have a look in YouTube on, on the YouTube uh, chat in a minute. And, um, monitoring that, my tech know-how hasn't stretched to that this time. actually quite a reddy brown some reddy brown hair texture here behind the eye Get that in. and again using that uh, lovely um, technique with watercolor watercolor so suited to where you can define hair or any edge by cutting into it with another color I suspect this is going to go on a bit longer. How are we doing? From 20 past four. Gosh, right. Yeah, so this is, I might just keep on streaming. I'll see how we go. I'm going to look in YouTube in a minute. So do, um, if you've got any questions, then please do put them in there. I wonder if you're still watching, Marida. I wonder how you're finding it, whether you've got your um, cup of tea and your paints out. lovely thing to do with your family just sit and draw I really love it on the rare occasions when I can tempt family members usually they model I've got a willing model in my family so the drawing <laughs> right now I've got that lovely bit of yellow cheek I'm in danger of getting a little bit too close to the um, picture and I need to step back for a second and just check the proportions and check the um, check the reference photo there we are right dotting around okay so um, those eyes I need to just color in that eyeball Actually, quite a yellowy brown. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of that Naples yellow that I was using earlier. There, and mix it with the um, burnt umber. Just go in here round, round that eyeball there and then we've got when that's dry i will go in with the darker brown and it'll start to look a little bit better and that other eye it's really catching the light and it's got the very yellow there and actually that's pretty similar to this color here on that cheek and here this uh this naples yellow is a very uh, opaque color as well so it's actually you can go over the top. I might use that later for some texture. Look at that. You can just, I hope you can see it actually works as a gouache body colour. Right. Now we've got a nice gingery colour that I've missed. 
as well so I'm going to get that in. And then I've got the brush. Okay, that's better. Now, um, before I do the whiskers on this side, um, I'm just going to use a slightly wider brush. <laughs> this one here. So this is my rigger that I've been using for the hairs and this one is um, just a smallish brush. Um, nothing special. <laughs> and I'm looking at the uh, texture around here. And I see, I think, that Dura appears to have used a brush colour that's coming out cool and warm it up with a bit more burnt umber which is quite a cool brown anyway right so I'm seeing I think quite a lot of um, widish dark colours um, that look as though they've been applied with a thicker brush I'm just going to try and get those in with any To delineate the um, the kind of layers of fur that are forming here, um, right? Got, there we go. Those he's he's got he's used some light, some thin, but he's also used some pretty thick. Um, and we want to really bring this breast hair forward, so I think it's probably quite reasonable to go in with something pretty dark. Um, and to do it dark with watercolour basically means, as well as using the dark pigment, you're using the, um, uh, it's not very dilute. So I'm cutting into this lighter colour here, hopefully making it look like convincing kind of clumps of chest hair. And um, this one here as well, this is all lovely kind of, he's really reveled in. Yeah. And in the hair. Okay, right, now I can see a lot of white hair going in over here. So I'm going to put a, a little bit of dark there in order for it to sit on top of something. Not that it is particularly dark, but we're not going to be able to see that white hair unless we've got something there. And a bit of texture here. Okay. Now that nose, there's some... It's obviously quicker. If you're using a, a thicker brush, you cover more area. Right, let's see these whoops see these feet okay Dura's got I think what I might do is do some landmarks so work out where those nails are and um, that will help with the proportions of the feet so I'm just going to mix a slightly darkish colour to have as a less dilute bit um, which I can mark the nails with to start with. So right, so we've got a nail that's coming down here and if I get that that's like a I've kind of got it round the head. Um, and here's another one there and then I can look at the shape of the paws but have the nails I thought that's going to happen as it goes my light. Right, and um, when you're doing people, it's quite a hand. I find it really nice to do um, fingernails. Um, you can consider them a bit like stars or something, just to map them out relative to each other without um, worrying about 
the fingers. Imagine, just look at the position of the... Um, oh, sorry, you can't see that on Instagram, can you? Or can you? Maybe you can. Yeah, just look at the position of the nails relative to each other. And that's a really good one if you're doing hands. You know, if you're not sure how... Hands are quite difficult, so if you've got a hand that you're drawing, let's say like that, just mark, look at those next to each other. Imagine they're like connected like a constellation and just mark those on the page first. So, top tip. Okay, so we've got quite a dark line as well here, the shadow area between the paws. So I'm going to go in with that, get an early win. And we've got one less, less dark nail here. Um, and I'm going to use some of that dark, it's going to dry, it'll dry a little bit lighter, I think. Watercolour generally does. Okay. Right, and, and then we've got this one here as well. So I'm going to do this. I think it's highly likely I'm going to tip my water over onto my keyboard in a minute. If I do, I'll say a very quick goodbye. <laughs> right, one, two, and one back here. Okay, and looking for any dark areas that I can get in while I've got this dark brush. So actually, because it's got quite a nice point, I can do some texture with this. So I'm just going to do that side. It's a little bit, I might add a bit more water. It's a little bit dark. I don't want these to be too contrasty. And then um, I can put in, so Dura has kind of marked out the, um, the borders of the toes and he's given some sort of allusion to the pads. I'm doing that too dark. Right, I might just take a bit of a blot to that, try and lift off. So if you catch it before it dries, if it's too dark, you can um, dab like that. Right, there we go. A few hairs here. And then this area. I had it I had it very kind of pinky and I'm not sure it really is. Right, so we've got a toe that comes here and another one here. Another one there. Right, lovely. And then here we've got this area. So there's gonna be some some lovely little white textures there. I reckon Dura must have killed this hair at some point and drawn it from the, the level of observation, I might be wrong, but I think it would be very, very hard to take all this information in from a subject that was moving, but I might be wrong. Don't want to spoil the magic. Okay, so I'm going around with my dark pen looking for dark things I want to make really dark. And I'm going to go, I'm going to do another layer on that eyeball. I usually put my glasses on when I'm doing eyes. Um, okay. Just to build up a little bit of intensity. And in a sense, that is really a function of contrast with the back of the eye. Sorry, with the background of the eye. So contrast with what's around it. But... Um, Okay, now I can't really make out from my own drawing the shape of the nose. And the nose is a very key feature, so I feel like it needs a little bit more definition and attention in this area. There. Uh, okay. And this eye, oh, that's going to have hairs on it, so that will pull out I'm just a little so now at the moment I've got a brush that's loaded up with quite dark so I'm actually going to go just onto those the base of those hairs just to give them a little bit more prominence because these these wiry hairs are really quite dark and they tend to especially do you know what if you're doing very detailed work you can some artists work at such a close detail that they have a sense on hairs individual hairs of a light side and a dark side and it's incredibly effective if you're if you're inclined towards that sort of level of detail right then um, 
let's have a look at the ears then I think I fancy doing a bit up here get some of those the ear contrast in so I'm going to use a slightly watery uh, cool I'm gonna go uh, mm, yeah I think I will use I will use the rigger let's see because um, if you look on the reference photo you can see Dura has a very rhythmic has done a very rhythmic job on those ears it's showing how evenly spaced the hairs are let's go this area here is very dark in that fold try and move my hand so you can see I think that's going to get a second or third go. So there, let's build that up a little bit with some more dark. Um, so you could do these hairs with um, pencil. They're really, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be paint. The main, it's quite good sometimes to do it if you're doing a, a copy, to try copying in a different uh, medium. So, or, or to try yourself if you're doing an original piece of artwork, try, um, it's quite nice to copy it um, in different, to try using different techniques for the same subject and see how they affect the finish. Okay, so we've got, this is a ridge here and I'm doing the inside of the ear and we've got another ridge here we've got some quite dark really dark I'm going to go in with a thicker brush I think cover some well, so we've got a really dark edge here along there and here and there it's that thing again so doing defining the fur by cutting into, so I'm defining this white fur by cutting into it with the with the darker brush. Okay. YouTube, if you're there, I'm just going to I'm going to check in a second. I'm sorry that I can't see your comments as you make them, but I am going to have a look. So if you've got any questions, just stick them in now, and I will go and have a look in two minutes. Love to hear how you're getting on if you're painting along. Are you finding this um, useful, interesting, impossible, totally easy? Have you bossed it? This is like a forest, this dear. A forest, one of those, uh, Europe I always think of them as European forests where all the trees are in line. I used to love that when we went to Belgium and watching all the all the straight line forests. <laughs> okay, now looking at this ear, squinting, I think I've missed a trick here in terms of that inside. I think I've got, I've not done the um, proper shading there. So I'm going to get that in because that's really going to help. convey the and then to grade it I'm just going to, need to go in with some water and okay and here as well there's quite a it's quite a sort of bluey cool section there get that in yeah, Okay, back to the back to the hairs, individual hairs, and here defined quite easily against the light colour. There, right. make sure that's dark enough to show. I might have to wait, but I'd say this is uh, not quite dry yet, so that's um, I can't put the texture on there until it's dry, but I can put some up here. Build that up a bit. Try and get that dark 
Okay, let's do the same on here. So we've got a lovely twist to this ear. And so um, it's going working along the edge. You always observe that edge very carefully as well. really caught those bristly hairs along the top. Well, he's made them look bristly, I don't know if they're bristly on the hair. They look quite sticky out -y. Right, well if you signed up for if you signed up for two hours, we're nearly done. I'm gonna have a look on YouTube now and see how you're getting on and also show my face. See how are you doing on YouTube? See what messages. Okay, oh, no more comments. Oh yes, oh dear, hang on. Let's go down. Sorry about this. Fur and feathers seem so very taxing and rewarded. Rewarding, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, Paul, you're right. They really are. Fur and feathers are um, lovely to do. And um, right, let's get on to this here catching the twist so there's a texture here and here I think I've got the grey I need to fill that in a little bit That's there and I'll come back to that and put the texture on afterwards when that's dry go to a find a bit that's I'll show my palette as well. This is my palette that I'm using. You don't need very much at all um, with this technique. Watercolour goes a long way, so be sparing when you're when you're putting it out. You you often don't use nearly as much as you expect to. Um, right now, this is dry. Now you can see those those hairs that I'm dotting on are staying where I put them. Hopefully, okay. Now let's go down here. This edge. It's quite hard when you're doing um, a drawing like this where you're working on the texture. It's quite hard to force yourself to still see the big shapes, um, but very, very important to not lose track of the big shapes. Lots of squinting even now okay um, right and then there's lots of texture on here so it takes quite a bit of planning i think watercolor is a, the medium which is least forgiving it's really uh, you can't really um, undo your watercolor nearly as much it's really nice for that you know like when you're working with pen and ink it gives a real sense of commitment that when you're going in your um how's that starting to look I don't know what you think guys it's not uh, no great shakes I'm missing I should have had a light area there I might just do that with gouache later there's a little bit of a gap between those ears make this ear too fat Possibly take this one. Let's see where we are with the eyes. Okay, so we've got a joint here um, where this, and there's actually, I think this is quite a muscular area because you need a lot of muscle to control those ears. I think that's quite an important little section there to kind of capture the, the strength and the way that the rabbit, the uh, rabbit hair controls those big ears, gets them to go where it wants. Right, and from the eye up to there, ah, maybe I could take that, that might help a bit, bring that in a bit there. A little bit of cheat now, we've got some lovely um, fat neck folds. <laughs> wouldn't say that if they were mine 
but on a creature like this I think they're gorgeous these creases on the neck get those in <laughs> and uh, we've got now we've got some really gingery hairs at the, um, in this ear here and they're quite fine but I'm gonna go with this paintbrush because it looks like it's managing I need them a bit stronger a bit less water okay They're quite pronounced uh, right so we've got that there and little lines rhythmic lines of hair almost like hatching Well, welcome to anyone who's joined. It's lovely to see you. I've had a lovely message. Thank you, dear friend, for your message. I don't know if you maybe you don't want to be called out on here, so I won't name you, but I love your message. Thank you. Um, I hope it's this is enjoyable for you. Um, if you're watching on Instagram, you can't. I'm sorry that I can't show the whole of the. Um, the whole of the screen on Instagram it's slightly limited um, in that it's a portrait format rather than landscape so I highly recommend looking on YouTube if you want to see the more of the drawing and my lovely face <laughs> so and and on YouTube I'm I am monitoring the chat so if you've got any questions don't hesitate to put them in um, or if you're watching this after after the recording and you want to put um, put anything to me, by all means do. I'd love to hear from you. Um, just drop me a DM or use my website. You'll see the address. Um, right. Lovely. There's a little V here. Where is it? So we're going to do a layer over the top with a light ink and I will show the reference photo again in a second so you can see how that um, represents what Dura did. But, um, if you've just joined, the uh, reference photo is freely available on the internet. Just look up Dura's hair. Um, okay, now I think this area here is a little bit, when I'm squinting, it's a little bit... Uh, pronounced and needs to be toned down a bit. I think the contrast is a little bit much so I'm just going to go in there with some a little warm wash and also here. Oh sorry that's my printer. There we go. Um, right and we've got some lovely cool stuff going on on the cheek here so there's like a, a panel now here's the there's the cheek and then we've got that behind the eye I'm just trying to get it in the right place there we go get those folds right if you know you know I wouldn't want any sort of a rabbit expert or hair expert looking at this and saying the folds are on the wrong place. Oh, the shame. <laughs> okay. Right. Doing some squinting, just trying to catch the... Um, big shapes, make sure they're generally right. Sorry about the sound of the printer. Okay, um, now we've got some texture to go on here. I've totally overrun. That's the lovely thing about drawing, you just to go into another world. I'm afraid this is going to be a good three hours probably, so. Don't hold your breath. I'll just zoom out a little bit so you can see where we've got to. Oh, yeah. There we go. Mm -hmm. 
focus. So, um, yeah, just drawing uh, Dura's hair and I've put some washes over and I'm doing the dark fur, so filling in the texture. Uh, trying to squint and look at big shapes, so straight away now, zooming out like that and looking on the screen, I can really see this, uh, this ear here is far too light. So I'm actually going to deal with that, a matter of urgency, with a layer of, I'm just using basically Payne's Grey and um, Burnt Umber, Burnt, uh, burnt Sienna. Okay, let's get some, let's get this right, that's there, there's a, so depending on the um, nature of the particular pigments in the watercolour that you're using, um, sometimes they uh, don't lift off. So you get very permanent colours like cerulean blue is one, but you can't lift it afterwards. So some colours lift off very easily later um, and you can just lift them with water. Sometimes you don't even want it to do that, it does it whether you want it or not. But other colours like these are, um, they, they can stay underneath so you can do, you can kind of build up in layers, but uh, it's one of those things if you if you study watercolours it's really good to know which colours do what and then you can start to play with it and that's what I meant about planning. You know, watercolours, watercolourists often do, you know, prepare, have a, have a sense of which colours they're going to use to and take advantage of that behaviour of the colours. Let them here as well shading there. Got a bit too much contrast here. Okay. Right, and it's bothering me that I've lost that little triangle of light there between those ears. I'm going to put that in later. Okay, oh thank you. Hey Tan, it's lovely of you to join on Twitch. Sorry I didn't see you, I don't know how long you've been there, how long since you wrote your lovely comment. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is uh, Jura, uh, Albrecht Jura, who's a German artist from the 16th century photo. So this is the photo that I'm working from. This is a reference photo from uh, Jura's painting. There's Jura. Um, he was pretty hairy himself and um, obviously liked hair. So, um, thank you so much for joining, it's really lovely. Do feel free to put any questions you want and um, the address is down there, my website, where thegirlweedartist.com slash live and the reference photo is there. You can watch this um, come along. But, uh, okay, I'll just carry on. Right. So I was just uh, so I think this area down here needs a bit of sorting, doesn't it? Let's get those um, again. This lovely thing you can do with watercolor to define um, define things by cutting in. So I'm not. This is. It happens that these hairs pretty much exactly match um, my paper color. So I'm just. I'm using I'm using a rigger brush a little bit, but also just using a normal, uh, and slightly larger watercolour brush to get those colours in. And I'm just going to go over and just look at the doing a little bit of squinting, just trying to get the balance a bit better about the darks and lights. This area here I think is too light. 
so I'm just kind of blobbing in a little bit kind of to get the, so the uh, form of the hair is a bit more um, accurate to the drawing. There's been speculation about how Um, how Dura managed to get such an amazing observational drawing of a hair and uh, I think he must have he must have uh, had a hair in his studio uh, possibly not, not a living hair it might have been an ex hair um, was my guess so let's get a little just a tiny bit of texture so watercolor always dries darker sorry lighter kind of allowing for that and um, right looking for anomalies differences between where I've got areas that are light kind of trying to just quickly have a checking in with the with the um, general before I go back to the specific of the hairs right and then some areas um, Jura has really done a really lovely job of um, leaving them you know he's been he's been in some areas he's been really really detailed and in other areas really quite uh, minimal and um, here's, a, here's an example of that where he's left you know there's quite a lot that hasn't been over explained you could accuse him of over explaining um, and yeah he probably wouldn't stand up in defense to that um, well over whether it's too much is a matter of a personal opinion isn't it I don't think this is too much but really worth checking out Dura's um, plant drawings as well um, Tani, Tan Fari, do I call you Tan? I'm not sure, but I, if you're, um, are you an artist? Do you love drawing and painting? I'd be interested to know what you like doing. This uh, under here is a lovely kind of rich colour. Uh, okay. Right. I wonder if that's dry enough to put some texture in. I think it probably is. Welcome to people who've just joined on Instagram. It's very nice to have you. Thank you. Thanks for checking in. I say hello. Hi there. Thank you for joining. I'm Gail and I'm just doing a copy of um, Albrecht Dürer's beautiful hair painting. So um, this is Albrecht Dürer. And um, so I've basically just done a bit of a pencil sketch. We started by looking at um, a hair skull. Um, so just slightly trying to pick that out and then did some washes. Um, and now I'm just doing um, uh, texture and uh, kind of doing a little bit of a juggle between texture and body color. I'm just going to go on this this area here I think needs to be a little bit warmer and maybe slightly darker so this is my palette and I've got uh, burnt umber and Payne's grey and um, got a bit of Naples yellow and some cadmium red uh, they were literally they weren't carefully considered colors they they literally just uh, fell onto my brush fell, fell out of my box um, in a very hasty bit of prep Okay, so I think I'm just looking at these areas now. I'm going to go over later with um, a white um, white ink to catch those highlights. If you look at the reference photo, which is uh, freely available on, uh, you can get it on Wikipedia um, or anywhere on the net. It's, it's public, um, publicly available, or there's a copy on my website which you can download. So um, yeah, just to say that's that's there. Help yourself and um, make sure you get a copy of the actual reference photo, the, the, the drawing by Dura, because lots of people do copies. It's easy to accidentally pick up 
a copy and I think if you're going to uh, learn from Albrecht Dürer you don't want to learn from somebody who's copied and you want to find the original material. Okay now I've got a really stark light area where there isn't one in the drawing. So I'm going to go over the top with um, some dark, you know, sorry, some light white ink. I've got some, I'm going to try this. This is uh, Dr. Martin's white ink. But first, I need to get those tones right. Um, now this, that's okay, I think. It's they're lovely they're longer longer hairs on here aren't they and almost so once I've got this under bit here sorted then I can lay the whiskers over the top so that's really what I'm heading towards um, okay so we've got some white hair there I've got that edge we're nearly there with the I need to sort of resolve this a little bit we've got some ginger which I've missed on there lovely yellowy warm orangey yellow I'm just going to mix that up with a little bit of Payne's grey and put that on there that will have some hairs on it and there's a couple of flashes of that there and there and I've already got it on here this Payne's grey I was saying earlier is very um, opaque so you can actually use it like a body colour you can use it to go over areas that are already painted so that's quite unusual for watercolours they're normally um, once they're on they're on okay we've got a lovely sort of slight yellowish hue to some of these hairs here as well and here that's probably not yellow enough Um, I might actually revert to my uh, some pencils at some point. Might be a nice way to control what's going on. Got some light, so we've got a darker area coming in here, like a cool area there, going up here, and um, some quite dark areas here going to stress too much about getting it exact and we've got this lovely dark bit there right and it's quite dark under that chin and that will help throw that forward so I might just go in a little bit more here just to get that muzzle coming forward and I'm just going to disrupt the edge of the muzzle too So guys, thanks so much for watching. It's really lovely um, not to be on my own on a Saturday afternoon painting, much as I love doing it on my own as well. I'd probably be doing this anyway, but it's so nice to share it. So if there's any, if you've got any questions on Instagram or on um, YouTube or Twitch, don't hesitate to ask. I'm more than happy to um, answer questions. Um, now or if you're watching on catch up and you're stuck or you want to send me your drawing then please do I'd be very happy to hear from you right, there we go there's a fold there isn't there okay it's lovely the way this ear is so much fatter the way it's sitting and this one I like the way he's observed that okay and then this area I've got this is a little bit too pronounced here I just need to knock that back a bit um, and it's going to have white hairs in front of it later okay let's just have a little squint and see what's going on here a lot of right now there's a lot of contrast on that eye so I'm going to go in and do another go and go again on the eyes 
get a bit more detail in. I'm just saying, focus in. And I could do the whiskers as well while I'm focused. Put my glasses on. Sorry about that cable. Not very professional. Okay, so I will just focus for you. Okay, now. Uh, squinting. So I've done the lightest of the um, brown, but there are some lovely warmer browns going on in that eye. Um, so, oh hi Jay, it's really lovely of you to join. Thank you so much. So nice. I'm glad you find it relaxing. I do too. Right. So um, I'm just going to go in here and put some darker, very gradually building up that eye there get that contrast trying to imagine the whole of the eyeball inside to work out the angles that I'm going for and uh, yeah there we go and we've got an, a sort of bit of lid here like that trying not to over describe and um, look so this eye comes over actually a line going down there. Okay, now we have a sense of bulge of the eyeball. There. Okay, some dark, warm darks here. There. Right, and this nose on here is not as light as I've got it, I don't think. And oh, some beautiful fine hairs on here. Just seen those, they lovely. A bit like uh, cats have on their noses, don't they? Really lovely short hairs. Going to have a look on uh, YouTube in a second so if anyone on YouTube has got any questions please don't hesitate to ask and I will be in there I'm sorry I have to actually sort of go and actively look on the chat because I haven't managed to get it showing on my tablet Irene is watching too oh hello Irene thank you so much for watching let me come on and say hello Hello Irene, hello Jay, it's lovely to see you, thank you so much for joining me. Please don't feel you have to stay for the whole thing, but um, I'm doing this um, beautiful, I'm just doing a master copy, so basically learning from the master. So this is by this guy Dura, he's not a very handsome guy, but not around anymore. He's uh, 16th century and um, really well known for his observation of uh, natural subjects, including himself quite a lot of uh, observing himself so um, this is the drawing at the moment um, and um, I'm just sort of building it up in layers and trying to get that texture so and I've got a mistake in that I'm waiting to go in and put a very light color up here I've missed I've, I've just been a bit careless um, so if you're looking at it thinking that's rubbish that's why I have I do know that section is wrong. Right. But uh, Irene, I wonder if you. Oh, hello, Frank. Lovely to see you. Oh, um, Irene, if you're, uh, if you've got your drawing stuff out, that's. Uh, I'd love to see what you do. Um, DJ can send me some of your work. Really nice to see. Right. So now that this, uh, so this area. Is I'm not quite sure it's dry. I'm going to put the, more, the rest of the whiskers on. So whiskers are great. I'm just going to dab it slightly. They're great for um, adding character, and I'm going to use this rigger. Um, so just mixing up. I've got basically just burnt uh, burnt umber, which is like a dark, cool brown, and a bit of Payne's grey. And so that's fairly concentrated there, you can see. 
and riggers are lovely they're so long so they hold lots of paint and they're very they're great for oil painting as well really nice so um, just looking carefully at what um, Dura did to define and he's done a lot of defining the form um, with with the detail which is qu I find quite an interesting um, approach and quite quite different to how we're taught to do it and now we're taught to um, stay away from the detail until the end okay now this eye here I'm just going to take advantage of the fact that I've got some really dense color on here uh, now let's get those so I'm going to go from the end of the whisker to the bit where it joins the rabbit because um, I want it to be thicker where it goes in so I'm kind of rehearsing I'm going to practice with a short one like that and then go for the longer ones they're beautiful sweeping you know they start almost right down here so I'll work from here just kind of imagining I'm not going to go for a total exactitude but Jura had a he's got it's really funny I think he's done some lovely kind of wiggly and overlapping ones he's got definitely got the curve join at a credible place and there's lots above the eye so I'm recharging my brush to get some of these ones in so they, I'm just making sure that I'm ready to stop at the right place touch the paper because the contrast is quite strong so they really notice and um, there's no there's no repeating this and there are some under here as well little whiskers there some here I restate my opinion that um, I think I must have had a hair, an ex hair in the studio to study. It has been suggested he maybe caught hairs and caught this hair and had it alive to um, look at it. That may be true as well. Right, let's get, uh, so there's a little bit of definition missing here. So this this cheek here comes like that and is basically Dura. Dura has just defined that edge with hairs there isn't a specific line um, we seem to do that quite a lot get that nostril and here we can show the hairs by cutting in um, I think we need a few more, don't you? Do you think this is probably needs a couple more big whiskers for the overall effect? Got some come. Oh, we've got some coming down here. That's a bit heavy. And quite a lot here. I don't want to go overboard. I think I might do a couple more in here. They vary in darkness as well. Some of them are very strong. Right, let's get some more of these whisks here. These are a little bit clunky, I think, and Dura did some really fine hairs there. Um, and here. Let's look for some more fine ones. Right, and here we've got lots of fine hairs that I can put in there. 
now that I've got the rig at a hand. There. And they actually extend beyond the edge of the background. And the, the odd one that's going the wrong way as well, very nice bit of almost like a sense of humour. I don't know. He doesn't look like he had much of a sense of humour. But you never know. Right, people on YouTube, I may have said this a second ago, but I am going to go and have a look and see if you've got any comments. Obviously, I don't mind at all if you haven't, but let's have a look. Um, you can say hello. Hello, lovely to see you. I'm Gail and I'm just drawing this beautiful hair. So I'm just going to go and have a little look to see if there's anyone waiting for any comments on YouTube. No, we're all right, I think. Thank you, Paul. That's really lovely of you to say so. I really appreciate it. I'm glad, yes, when you're, when you're copying something, um, like this. Uh, the first thing to do is to let go of trying to do something that's exactly like what you're what you're copying because it won't be the same. Um, but it, the main object, well, the objective is to learn. So from this, I'm just trying to learn how uh, Dura um, got these amazing effects. Um, and I think I'm probably. My drawing is, um, it's, the, the screen is making it quite high contrast, possibly more contrasty than it actually is, so just to be aware. But I will post a picture of this later. Um, but uh, if, you're, if you're enjoying it and you have to go, then please uh, do find the, the video is going to be available later on YouTube um, on my channel. So if you subscribe to my channel, then you'll you'll get notified when new videos are posted and um, and also if you want to have uh, you want to share this with anyone that you think would enjoy it then um, it will be available afterwards on my channel so easy to do that so just going in with the rigger adding a bit more texture and um, I'm going to see if this is really dry. I really want to use a flash of white to um, just regain. There's a very important, I think, on the reference photo. If you have a look between the ears, uh, there's a little flash of light. And I think that's very important because that um, those ears aren't... Um, aren't actually too chunky, they're quite thin down the bottom and it makes this one look really, really fat. So I just want to put a flash in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, gouache, which is um, opaque, opaque paint. And I'm just going to put a little bit of that and basically I'm going to try and mix up. Oh, do you know what? That's so old. I can use this Chinese white instead. Okay, so I'm going to mix up basically the colour in there, but I can't get it out. This is most unprofessional. I'm going to dig it out with my brush. Right, it work. Very old paint. Some of this is my granny's paint. <laughs> And um, I don't often use watercolour, so that's why it's not. Okay. Right, so I need to use a clean brush. Just try and dissolve a bit of white and some uh, of that opaque um, there trying to mix up the same colour as the paper, basically, in an opaque wash that I can put on in the gap between the ears. I'll do a little bit on the side just to test it first. So this is Chinese white and Naples yellow. Um, might be a bit too much water, let's see. Right, let's try it on here. Let's 
a little bit light. Now that's good because I can easily darken it. I'm going to add a little bit more brown. So I'm just trying to make an opaque mix. that matches the colour of the paper um, which I can then put between those ears so I think that'll have to do there we go so I don't want it I've got rather a lot on my brush it's well charged as they say um, lose a bit right. and then I just want to go in here that that. So having said you can't uh, you can't do stuff, you can there we go. You can't undo things with watercolour, you sort of can. Right now I'm liking the look of this opaque and if this dries um, if this dries opaque, I might use that for some of the brush strokes. On the picture there is a of uh, lovely white brushwork um, but I think I will also try using a pen just for a bit of variety. I'm using a dipping pen and some white ink. So what I'm doing now is basically just trying to do the um, light hairs which are um, which do a on the back of the hair there's some lovely light hair showing there and some in here so I'm going to use the white I've sort of kind of set it up with some dark areas for it to sit on um, so he, put, he did some white here some little bits of texture and here so I'm just going to go I'm not going to use them just for whitening oh, I need to give this a good shake now these probably they do tend to um, settle Oh, thank you, Tammy. That's really lovely of you to say. You're too kind. Thank you. I'm really glad. I hope this isn't uh, too boring. It's very slow. But that's just the nature of the beast. <laughs> okay, so let's try this white ink there. I'll move the camera so you can see. I'm just doing it on the side there. The pet. Just checking that it's opaque enough. Let's see what happens when it goes over that. It, it does definitely seems to do the job okay so how am I going to do this then I think so this pen is perfectly dry although it's black I usually use it for black but I'm going to use it for um, white so I haven't done this before you're watching the first experiment I'm, I rather than dip the black ink pen into the white ink I'm going to just ink on and see what happens. I made a little pool reservoir so I don't want it to be really bright and luckily this isn't but I think we could do with a bit more. So this is uh, Dr Martin's ink. Sorry I don't know if you can hear my tummy rumbling. <laughs> That's the thing isn't it with art you just get transported Right, let's see if this is going to work as a pen. If not, I might just paint the ink on. I'm not sure it's going to run through this pen. And I don't want it to go blobby. No, I don't think this is going to run through the pen. Okay, right, I will rinse the pen off. And that can be reassigned back to black ink. Um, so, I'm going to use the rigger instead. Let's wash that off and try that in the white. Lovely, okay. These, this rigger is beautiful. So, it's pretty white and looking at um, the reference photo, Jura did use, it was pretty white um, what he used. Um, you'd never normally use undiluted white. Um, particularly like when you're oil painting you very rarely use you know I use titanium white but always put a little bit of something in it to make it to warm it up or cool it down okay let's go back onto the hair there we go I'm gonna go a bit closer 
and also um, turn the light on there. Okay. So for some reason, my camera is showing a lot of contrast. Oh, thank you so much. This is uh, that's very kind of you, and and Kai three three three. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just adding a little bit of um, textured white. Hopefully you can see this. So there is like sits over the top, and looking at the way Dura did it. He's obviously observed the direction of the hairs and is doing them in little groups and um, it's quite a sort of rhythmic over the top and following the smooth that so you can see right following the path of the hairs The hairs, hairs. Um, I might just run a little yellow through that because I think this is looking, as I mentioned before, rather titanium whitey. And actually, I think when I see it on the, on the painting, it's too stark. Um, okay, so here's really helps to define this edge here getting these light light hairs they it's almost like doing a wash of white over the top really lovely you can feel the you feel as though you know what it would feel like to stroke this hair it's like a kind of the wispy slightly it feels as though it would be slightly um Slightly coarse, not uh, like silky. And again, Dura's put quite a lot of white along that edge there, bringing that bit forward. And I think I'm going to just cheat a little bit, although Dura didn't. I'm just going to put a few little hairs in here. Um, and there's, he's got some hairs across there cutting in. He's defined this edge in two ways, um, partly, um, partly by cutting into the light with the dark, but also by doing some light hairs overlapping onto the dark background, both ways. And that really gives a sense of the texture. And I'm trying to sort of group these hairs, not just have them um, You're not just doing them evenly along, they tend to tend to go in like little clumps. If you have an animal, you can, it's nice to sort of look close up at how the how the hairs they're really distinctive. Some some creatures have hairs. I used to have a cat where the hairs were striped. If you've got an individual hair and um, they actually had it was called ticking along the length of the hair. Right. Some little bits in here. Some quite so. Dura's used this to show the kind of um, slightly bristly hair on the top of the ear. Right, if you're on YouTube, I'm going to go and have a look in a second. Hello, Erin. Thanks so much for joining. Um, lovely to see you. Let's have a look and see. Um, I'll just quickly check in with my YouTube friends. Make sure I haven't missed anything. Okay, great. Um, right, let's go back to the drawing. So close up, there is lots of kind of talking of bristly hairs, lots of really bristly hairs here on the top of the head, just there, real textured and again rhythmic. So not just like one, one at a time, they, they tend to go in patches. If you look at animals, that is what they do. They, 
they, they almost have, are in lines or clumps and uh, there's a bit where they are just distributed but generally they're in at least pairs and then Dura has really made a point of doing the imperfect hairs you know the kinked ones the ones that are um, quite stubbly this lovely bent whisker the said earlier I think Dura was a hair guy it, judging by his own hair he clearly it took, looks as though it took a lot of maintenance Dura's hair very carefully coiffed and he celebrated his hair very much in his self-portraits there's a definite sense of him pride, proud of what he's achieved with his no doubt very extensive maintenance routine such as I would never have time or inclination for right and there's some in this bit here this area here is actually just the color of the paper I haven't painted that area but um, looking at looking at Dura's watercolor there are some streaks of hair going in through there and some here Yep. coming out onto this grey helps to lighten the grey a little bit I think and then maybe here as well a few little hairs I feel like you can understand that lovely I reckon this bit was quite soft Right then, um, this area here has just about dried, that's good. So bits going on here, little bits here, and I'm going to put the white on the cheek. So this boundary here is an important characteristic, this nice chubby cheek. And those hairs, I should perhaps have done them before I went in with the whiskers, but hey ho. And there's some catching the light here. Oh, sorry, I've moved out of the view of people on Instagram. There you are. Right. If you're watching on Instagram, you might find it, uh, you, you can see more on um, YouTube. But, uh, Because uh, Instagram's portrait format and my drawing uh, doesn't all fit quite. But I've tried, sorry, I, that was an oversight just then. I try and keep it visible. Um, if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the chat or send, send them to me. And if you do any drawings, I'd love to see them. So if, if but you're tempted to do a copy of the hair, probably do better than me I'd love to see and um, doesn't matter what medium you use doesn't matter if it's um, this is watercolor but um, you could use just pencils you could do the same the same principles um, with pencils you could even do it in oils Right, a little bit there, that yellow there, some here, now we've got, I didn't really quite catch this eye very well I don't think, might do some hair there. Um, now I'm just looking over the whole thing, looking for things I've missed, so um, Countless things aren't the quite the business of the master himself, but um, I'm going to put. You can see on the reference photo, which I'll show you here. I'm going to put this uh, background. I am just going to rub out. I've got a line here down here where I originally planned to end. I'm just going to rub that out. It, luckily, it was a soft, soft um, pencil and. 
I've slightly gone over, I've done it slightly bigger than Dura's original by accident, not by design. Um, okay, and I'm going to do some of that shadow that he put in. So the cast shadow is very subtle and um, I'm going to use Payne's Grey, a nice, a nice bluey colour. Let me show you there. So I'm going to mix up a nice bluey colour here and just test it on the side. Okay, so it's quite a subtle that he just did. Some lines like this. It gets darker in there, so I'm going to do a little bit more. I'll do a second layer, so when it's dry, I will go back in and in a second, I'm going to put the highlight in the eye. That's always a nice reward thing to do. There's a little bit of shadow here. Okay, and it comes right up to here actually, the faint shadow. Gives the hair a sense of volume. And also it, it means the edges are a bit more varied. So these edges here don't stand out so much. And while I've got the grey, I might just do a tiny bit more subtle rendering here. Try and squint and um, get those areas that are jumping out as needing a bit of moderation. And I think the end of the hair's nose is actually a bit bright in my drawing and has got quite a bit of grey in it, quite a sort of bluey tinge. I'm going to put that in. Um, now we've got something. I think this eye is actually too light here. Um, so I'm going to go in with a slightly more browny brown around the eye wrists. Um, looking at my screen, the picture looks really different to how it does on the page. It looks on screen, it looks really um, high contrast. Um, and I have to say that's not what's in front of me here on my drawing board. Okay, let's get that. I just want to darken that a little bit. And this one here just standing out a tiny bit too much there and here as well. Now I've got a little bit of that uh, Payne's Grey on my brush so it's quite opaque which is fine. And I'm just trying to make sure the light areas are light and the dark areas are dark. And squinting to pick out areas of contrast so where I've perhaps got too much contrast I can just knock it back a little bit because the area that the eye is drawn to the areas of high contrast so this way I can make sure that the viewer doesn't get attracted to the wrong bits right um, so let's go in and do that highlight on the eye Um, I think we're probably about 10 minutes away from finishing and if you've got a um, hugely overrun but was just so enjoying this and I hope I hope people have enjoyed it like I have um, right I'm going to just check that that works so here's my test area oh that was wet anyway I need to find a dry yeah I think that's going to show up okay so let's go to the hair's eye and um, maybe zoom in a bit. And Dura has a very, very precise two little, two little lines on the eye. And those lines basically show they're like a window and they show the curve of the eye. I've slightly exaggerated them. There. Um, there's none on this side, 
but there are also some little hairs here. I noticed while I'm in there. Put those on. Missed those earlier. And Dura has also put a little bit of highlighter along the whiskers. Believe it or not, over the top. Um, just on a couple of them, it really shows their thickness. Shows how the light shines on the top of them. Right, and um, there we go. Okay, so I think that's probably enough. Um, if you're on YouTube, I will come and have a last look to make sure no one's put any questions in. Oh, we've lost, there's a bit here. Gonna get these hairs here. Lovely kind of tufts. There, where it joins the head. And some little specks there. And here. really want to re oh there's a little bit of shine there you now it's kind of wet and some more white hairs on that cheek quite a lot of white hairs on this cheek actually right and this is nearly dry so I might just give that another minute to and then I'm just going to look over I'll go and pop onto um, YouTube um, just to see if anyone's left any comments that I need to respond to. Yesterday! Hello, so lovely. Loving the tonal range, the volume and weight are certainly kicking in. Oh, thank you. Yes, well, it's one of those, it's been a bit like a bit of a jigsaw puzzle and a bit of a kind of leap of faith, really, to get, the, um, uh, to get it to work. So I'm just actually, just now I've taken my eye off, noticing that these bits, so stepping back a little bit, noticing things that aren't quite there. And it's lovely where you've got that bit of contrast, where you've got some dark and you can go in with the light. You don't want to overdo it, otherwise it can look uh, like you've, well it is a gimmick really, isn't it? But, um, okay. And I'm just going to also go in with some tiny bits of almost black just to cut any last bits of. Um, in fact, you know what? I will actually use almost undiluted. I've got some grey here. So lovely and dark. So I'm just going to look around and see where can I score some cheap points with this get those little bits of contrast um, there I need to just get those get those folds to disappear behind that ear there by going in with the dark super dark darks and here there's a yeah I don't want to over explain um, some lovely bits here where, which I haven't caught yet um, I, I've really gone off piece to be honest because I can't see much this dark but um, unfortunately I don't have um, Jura's skill to the point that I haven't although despite your lovely comments thank you yesterday I don't think I have quite got his um, amazing rendering without the probably need to just get that tiny bit more contrast to make mine work and I I think I might have that eyeball a little bit too small sorry that pupil and I'm just checking the angle that's all right comes down a bit more like that and we've got one more there a bit of a okay and these nostrils as well that's really dark oh in that nostril not there though 
block that away. So we've got a we've got a area here just to have that crease. And a line here. Any more for any more? Some dark spots where the whiskers meet. Those in. It's incredible realism. And really what I'm doing is killing time until this is dry, which will be another couple of minutes, and then I can put oh I can put this bit in. Um, and then I can just put that second degree of the shadow in. Um, I noticed that Dura used a lot of dark sort of on the boundaries, and I think that might have been because as the as the sh as the form turns, it tends to have a. Uh, I've got almost as an edge here. Um, it tends to go darker where the form turns. Right, there's an edge here as well, and some more hairs. Goes on. And here we've got an edge on this ear too, so we we'll just try to look for where you can sort of see lines and I'm making sure that there's a line of sorts on my picture, even if it's not quite in the same way that Dura had. And then catching this edge here where we're really showing the muscular control of the rotation of the ear and the strength that that takes. Okay. Right, now let's just get that shadow a bit more in here. So this is dry now, so I'm just going to do a second layer of shadow in the deeper shadows with my medium brush. Here we are. Quick check of the reference. So Payne's Grey with a tiny bit of whatever else is slopping around on my palette. Trying to get and warm it up a tiny bit. So Payne's Grey is really a dark blue, and um, you know watercolors are beautiful. How you can build them up in layers. So here's a set. Here's an area where I can just go in and have that kind of occlusion shadow. Well, not quite. It's not that deep, but just get it in there, and it really helps. Um, anchor the subject and give it a sense of weight. He almost did, did his shadows as hair, didn't he? So they, if you have a look at the reference photo, um, there is a sense of... Right. Okay, so I think I'm going to stop there. I'll just zoom out a little bit so you can see the whole picture if you're on Instagram. Here we are. Um, okay. So this is a copy of Jura's hair. Here is Jura with his hair and here is the hair he drew. Um, let me move that so you can see. So there there, this was in the 16th century, and I've just done a really quick uh, three-hour um, version. And um, I'll show you the drawing board. So um, basically, just doing the big shapes. Um, we did a sketch with a sketch card. Check where the, um, you know, make sure the brow is kind of taken into account, and then um, big layers with. I just used. Um, cadmium red and um, Naples yellow which is a creamy very opaque yellow uh, this is Payne's grey and burnt umber and that those are the only colors I used I used a little bit of this uh, Dr Martin's ink which I really like um, so I use the black all the time for drawing um, Dr PH Martin's um, Bombay white so it's always called Bombay but this is the white one 
Um, and um, yeah, there you are. So I hope I hope you've enjoyed it. I really, really love doing this. I'll zoom around a little bit so you can get off the detail. Um, so I'm using some um, uh, white ink. So there's some really cool, cool highlights and um, just trying to follow the way Dura built up um, his form using the texture. Okay, um, so let's go to say goodbye and um, I will have a little look on YouTube after I signs off but uh, thank you guys so much for watching I really hope this is useful um, it'll be available on my YouTube channel so if you know anyone who you think might enjoy this exercise the um, the reference photo is freely available and the the full um, it's three hours this has taken um, will be available on my YouTube channel as well on the live playlist so um, please help yourself please share it if you think there's anyone who would enjoy and um, really I have to hand it to Jura for his amazing work so um, I really not fit to hold a pencil to this but um, still I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope this has inspired you please do pick up your pencils um, and have a great weekend happy Easter and I'll see you very soon so I'll hopefully be back again next weekend with something else um, I haven't decided what yet, so very easily influenced if there's something you'd like to see. Okay, right. Take care, everybody. Thank you again for joining.